let me t take it personally. I was during the time, like, you know, my sister committed suicide. My daddy died shortly after that. During that time, I still wanted male connection. The desire to be married and be or and, and to be in a connection, an intimate connection with the man ain't going nowhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just because you're mourning and grieving don't mean you don't want no, no, you don't want partnership. In fact, it emphasized my desire to want partnership because I didn't want to be, I, I would have been nice to have that burden shared with someone else. So imagine I'm date, I'm dating. I, I went on a dating app, you know, from time to time, because I don't really be outside. I have to use a dating app. So I go on the dating app and um, connected with people, but I made sure I put in my profile that I wasn't looking for, you know, long-term and stuff. Cause I don't like to mislead anybody, but um, you know, what I'm telling you is listen, y'all, I know I was not emotionally un uh, available to nobody met this guy. He said his intentions were the same, just trying to meet friends, just trying to connect and this, that, and the other. We went to happy hour. We talked, got to know each other, was just hanging out. He was like, would you want to hang out again? I was like, yeah. So it was just cool. Like it was no date, no pressure where every once in a while he would check on me, Sean, we would talk, you know, text and stuff. And, and then these, and then we end up like maybe having like maybe one other phone conversation. So he said, like he wanted to get together again. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, fast forward, somehow he sends me, not somehow, but he sent me this really cool questionnaire of like 50 questions to get to know the person. It was so cool. He was like, what's your email? He sent me that and he sent it to me and I'm already perking up because I'm not trying to connect, connect. So what I'm saying is this, I was aware because I am emotionally connected I could feel the difference where I wasn't emotionally connected. When I was emotionally unavailable, I could feel it. I knew the transition for me. So I ended up telling dude, I was like, you know, he sent me that. And I was like, this is so cool. Oh, I wish I was in a better space. Yeah. When you think of, when you hear the word emotionally unavailable, leave in a comment, what is the first thing you think about when it comes to it? emotionally unavailable and have you ever been have you ever been emotionally unavailable in a relationship have you ever been with someone who was emotionally unavailable and how did you get through it did you see that person grow did they change did they get better or uh, maybe they were too, too much and you was like i can't do this anymore they, they're not going to change they're going to be who they are and that's it so let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to share some of my story with you as well. Uh, our guest should be here in a little bit. She's on her way. Emotionally unavailability. I was reading some content about the topic at hand. And uh, I was looking at today. Um, Today.com. I was looking at that. And I was looking at psychology today as well. And um, Psychology Today is probably one of my favorite websites to go to when it comes to finding content um, and dealing with topics like this. So I do want to say while we wait on our guests that a couple of different sources says that 35 to 40 percent of relationships feel emotionally unavailable. That's 35 to 40 percent. But yeah, 35 to 40%. So let's talk about this a little bit. For me, um, I really didn't know I was emotionally unavailable until I went through my divorce. Uh, some of you know my story. I was married for 15 years. And um, looking back, back, I realized now that I took a lot of things personal, which I shouldn't have had and I, and I had to learn that too i had to learn not to take everything personal because everything isn't about me and that will cause a lot of arguments a lot of frustration uh, until i had to learn in therapy thank god to my therapist shout out <laughs> to my therapist for helping me to get through that because i realized i kept hitting my head over and over again when it came to how people really felt um about a situation or me there we go. Hi. What's up, Q? How are you? I'm good. I was like, uh oh, she ain't gonna be in. No, I am. I am. I'm here. I'm here. That's what's up. Well, um, to uh, the three people in the world who might not know about you, tell us who you are. Cut it out. Cut it out. 
Okay, so first of all, thank you so much, Sean, for having me. Um, hey, baby. Um, thank you so much for having me. I am Aquila Maddox, the inspirationalist, and my passion is confidence, relationship, and purpose. But this relationship conversation is so near and dear to my heart. I think it's important to have people who are in favor of love, but who have had real experiences so they can help us drive success of continuing to press forward in relationships. So that's who I am, also known as Coach Q or just regular Aquila. I'm good with that. Yeah, that's what's up for sure. So when we talked about this topic, what was the first thing that came to your mind when we when we talked about this off camera? What were you thinking? What was I thinking? That, you know, that there is a lot of misconceptions around, um, a lot of misconceptions around being emotionally unavailable. And I was one of the people that I don't think it's always sometimes we actually we, we convince we, we teach people like, you know, to identify red flags. And I think that's important. But I also re I want people to recognize that there are some things, um, you know, I think there are some things that, you, you know, to be honest with you, can look like green flags and make you think that this is not, you know, this is not the, the, the negative space. This is not something that is going to cause harm to me it can there are some things that can be some green flags that make that that should really it's just to raise awareness it's not to make people sit there and live in fear sean and stuff like that but it's to raise awareness you know what i'm saying and i myself like i i, I shared with you like i've dated some really great men and some of them i learned later were emotionally unavailable and even some of them learned that they don't have the ability to connect with me on an emotional level. This wasn't personal. You know what I'm saying? This is their own personal experiences. So that was really the thing that, you know, came to my mind was like, there's just so many misconceptions. We think all red flags are these hurtful, harmful things that, you know, we should all automatically know and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's real. Uh, Lauren Austin says, give relationship advice when it comes to young people. Yes. You want to you you take that, Keith? Well, so I, I want Lauren to be a little bit more specific, but um, this is information that we're sharing today, Lauren, that I think would really be valuable to you too, because even in your generation, people can become emotional, can be emotionally unavailable. And Lauren, you know, the reality is us girlies, you know, we like all the touches and the feelies. We like the butterflies. We like all of those things. But there are people who can create butterflies in your stomach and they, and they don't have nothing going for them in their insides. And so I'm just ready to dive in. Let's go. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, you, you give me butterflies, but oh, my God. Okay. You give, <laughs> I was going to give me butterflies, but you ain't got none. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Just, just, just. Yeah, a feeling. That's what it is, right? Feelings, you know, and I, I know this sounds crazy. I got this revelation like some years ago, but emotions, they, they come do. and go. They do. they do. Emotions make wonderful servants, but terrible masters. They do. You know, so it's like you can be feeling one way in, in, in you know, 10 minutes and then two hours later, you, you some, you feeling different. Yeah. You know, um, my mentor always always tell me, you know, don't make a decision until you are emotionally regulated. And I was like, okay. Agree. <laughs> About that. Um, okay, so psychology today, I was doing some research on this topic, and they define emotionally unavailability as a pattern of difficulty connection with one's own emotions or with others emotionally. Tell me emotions. So here's the thing. What's so crazy is, as much as I am one that is an avid like I'm an a, a avid supporter of understanding that you're not, there, there are seasons where the butterflies may lay dormant, okay? There are moments in life where you may not like your, power, your spouse or partner. Y'all may not like each other, okay? I do understand that your emotions fluctuate, but one's inability to connect with you emotionally is damaging. It can be very damaging because like I just said, you give me butterflies, but you don't have any, right? You don't have, basically what I'm saying is that I'm developing these feelings for you. I'm drawing it into you. I'm becoming intimately connected to you, and you're like a brick wall. You still, you still a cocoon, right? You, you haven't even, yeah, you haven't even begun to process, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's that's interesting. So, emotionally 
availability manifests through a lack of emotional expression or difficulty talking about feelings. Now, for me, and we talked about this off the air, I struggle with that because I think a myth is, you know, once they're the same, they're going to always stay the same. Yep. That's who they are. Uh, a lot of times, think, think about exes, right? If you see your ex who you were with five years ago and they see you today, they still see you five years ago. They, they rarely see you as who you are today, right? Yeah. You know? So I think that's one of the myths because I had to learn how to change over the years because even in my last marriage, I struggled big time with that. And a lot of that comes from being stifled as a kid. Um, I, I grew up in that generation of children should be seen and not heard. Yeah. You know, so my feelings didn't count. My feelings weren't valid. So that I was trained to keep my feelings to myself. So when I got into a relationship, I was like, once we hit a brick wall, I'm like, uh, uh, what you want me to say? <laughs> you know, and she's frustrated with me, but I literally don't know how to carry this conversation without blowing up, without controlling my emotions, right? Being stifled for years. So you can't change through some therapy, through some you books, can. through some mentors. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? I know men struggle with that a lot. Yes. Um, hold on. I just realized I might have to do, I might have to do some on my computer really quick, but so I might need you to fill in space for a couple oh. minutes. But what I want you to, but but what I would say really quick is, I think that's such a good point because again, emotionally unavailable. You, if you have an experience with a person that's emotionally unavailable, a person may think that this is something as a result of them. Like, what did I do wrong? You know, how did I, I force you to get to the point where you're closed up, or why am I not enough for you to open up? Right. Go ahead. That's that's good. Yeah, because. And I'm gonna do all that. Yeah, for sure. And like and like you said, a lot of times we think that it's they take it personal. You don't have to take it personal because that was an issue that I had to deal with, that I had to come to grips with, that I needed to get the necessary healing in order to know that my voice does matter, right? I had to get to that place. And looking at past relationships, they took it personal. Like I didn't like them or that I, I didn't want to say anything or I was stonewall. And sometimes I was stonewall because I just literally didn't know what to say. And when I started to express my feelings, my feelings started to come out, the reactions weren't what I thought. So I was just like, like oh, okay. So it's almost kind of reaffirming again. Like, okay, so this is why I can't trust anybody because my feelings were always uh, hindered, you know, when I was a kid when I was growing up so now I get into this relationship and now they this person might not be able to handle what I'm saying to them right now or they might have not taken it the way that I thought that they should have took it right 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 exactly and so again it's uh it to me the understanding of this allows people to have a perspective that also doesn't force us to go into a space where we are constantly trying to force somebody to be something they can't do like this isn't so, like let me tell you oh my god i realized that i have this unconscious desire to try to heal people even outside of being coach q this wasn't a coach q thing this was a oh my gosh like i know life can be so great for you and i know that and this ain't even about you got to be with me this is a i want you to have a good experience in life and so when i've dated people even if the connection that you're going to develop ain't with me mm. i want you to be able to connect so then i'm trying to even if i'm the catalyst for it i'm wanting to help unlock whatever the thing is why i'm saying this is this that i had to grow to the place where i stopped trying to become responsible for everybody's healing because i cared for them because i loved them at some point i may have developed love for them and then i come become aware of some of their issues and some of the issues, like I said, I've had to learn have nothing to do with me and that I don't I don't have to be the catalyst for the change. I don't have to be the initiator of the change. You know, whatever support looks like, sometimes those people have to find a way to communicate how you can support them instead of my desire. And I talked to you about it before. I'm, it's so real for me to know that I am a help me. I, I am here 
to, you know, be the rib for real. Like whoever the Lord blesses me to, to be with, I'm here to be that person's aid in, in whatever way I can. And knowing our lane, and I think we've talked about it, I don't know, before, when we don't know our lane, sometimes we start in, inserting ourselves in places just to be helpful because it's kind of like I remember, um, you know, my mom coming over and knowing when to not have to mother the mother. My mom could come over, see that I'm a mom of a child, a baby. My mama had eight kids, baby. She a professional, okay. But she would come over when I had my babies and allow me to mother. You got to know when to sit back and know when it's not your lane. That's my point. I don't, and some, sometimes as women, maybe even men, but I'm not a man, so I don't know. But I know as women, we are capable of just wanting to be helpful and an asset. And we show up trying to be assisting, to assist in areas that ain't even our responsibility. So that's why I think these conversations, like what you're sharing, is so valuable. Like people understanding the other sides, people being able to um, have awareness to not personalize somebody else's process. And that's why the therapy is valuable because those people are are going to be able to really break down and dissect and help them walk through some of the, you know, their own experiences. There is a thing like, you know, another thing I struggle with is giving up on people. And when a person is emotionally unavailable, it may be a cause for pause. But who want to do that? Who want to end up single again, right? Who want to disconnect from somebody that you have love for them, even though they are very much struggling with their love and connection with you? But who wants to let that go? Because you have a tie to them. But there is a place that sometimes that's how some relationships end anyway. Divorce and things like that. Feeling like you're at this point of meeting a brick wall because there's no movement, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm going to stop right there. What are your thoughts? Oh, no, that's good because it's easy to give up on a relationship and be like, you know, hey, this guy or this girl, you know, I'm I'm through. I get it because a lot of times people inbox me with, because uh, I think I post, I put a post on Instagram the other day. I said, give your spouse or your significant other time to unlearn, right? Unlearn old habits, unlearn, unlearn uh, family of origin, right? Like what's more important, the family you come from or the family you're trying to create? Exactly. You know, That's good. so so people struggle with that. With you know how when should I give up or when should I uh, persevere? You know, and again, I'm a big fan of fruits of the spirit. You know, long suffering. You know, what I'm saying some things you have to learn. Um, and I and I can't personalize that for everybody, right? Everybody's situation. Yeah. Obviously, I've I've been through a divorce, but I think for me, I had to go through therapy. I had to go through a divorce in order for me to get that. Uh, and my therapist, I'll never forget, she told me, she said, Sean, you don't have to carry everything. And I, I was like, oh. Yeah. So now when people do tell me things, I don't have to take it personal. I can be like, okay, that's their vantage point. You know what I'm saying? I can respect that. Even if even if they talking to me about something, I don't have to take it personal. And, and we can stay connected instead of us checking out because it's easy for one person to run off, you know, or they just, you can tell when they check out, right? You just like, oh, they gone. They're there, but they're gone. Exactly. You know. But So I actually wrote a couple of things down that I wanted to address around the myths versus the truths. But I want to say this, that there is a place for staying, but there is a place for leaving. And you have yeah. to, to me, that's where, you know, getting into, to the conversation like or or should i say inviting a therapist into the conversation would be helpful because sometimes it's not again it's not something that may be on the timeline that you are on, that you're in you know um really quick though could you talk about your own personal experience like when you said you experienced being emotionally unavailable do you believe the resolve because you ended in divorce but did you believe that that was the correct resolution or do you believe that it was do you believe that, again, we, we can't say and forego that your wife isn't amazing today. That's not what I'm asking. We're not asking whether or not all things work together for your good of those who love the Lord. We're not asking that. Okay. I'm asking, do you believe that it's something that was genuinely possible to be on the timeline to be to heal? Oh, great question. I don't think so. I think I was too far removed. I think we were too far removed, mm -hmm. right? 
I, I initiated the divorce. And like I was saying before, I did a live the other day. I stayed, I think we even talked about this. I stayed an extra, not an extra, but I stayed five years knowing that the marriage was over already. That's extra there, bro. <laughs> That's extra. <laughs> That's extra five. You gave him an extra five. Yeah. Yeah, so we should have been through in 10, but it those last five. And I, I remember one day when she, asked, she told me, she said, you don't love me anymore. And I was like, I do. But I remember my old, my old pastor friend of mine, he told me, he said, Sean, your problem is you are uh, you are faithful to a fault. So, you know, so that, I, that's a good segue. <laughs> yeah, right. Because one of the things, Things that like I wrote down these different things that you know came to me about and so the one that you just said is like consistent versus habitual there are some people that when I, in my own experience I I experienced a guy who was so habitual that it looks consistent and it looks like he's doing all the right things he had no tie to it though he was habitual he could be great on accident mm, that's good. so that's the faithful to a fault like you could be so committed it looks good they like girl he's staying y'all working it out and oh you're sleeping in separate rooms but at least ain't nobody gone nowhere girl he gonna still trying to work on it absolutely not that's not okay mm -hmm. um i wrote down that you know so again like he was habitual and 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 consistent like but you have to understand that some consistencies are habitual mm -hmm. it's just what they are raised to do it is what they are in practice of doing it's the stuff they know wins in the relationship, but they ain't got to have no tie to it. So they could be on dates every two weeks because they know that taking you on a date every two weeks is what they should do. It doesn't mean they want to see you every two weeks in a personal, intimate setting. Emotionally unavailable people, they don't, you know, they struggle with emotions. It doesn't mean they struggle with being able to carry out certain actions and behaviors. You are a man. You said you went through this. Tell me if I'm wrong. That's good. That is good. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. You, yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. You're just doing things out of duty. Out of duty. And it, it doesn't mean they're bad people is what I'm saying. Emotionally unavail unavailable people are not always bad people. They don't, they're not always out to hurt you with the same ill intent that the player player from the Himalayas is trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm just telling the truth. It's not the same. Real, yeah, so, yeah. It's so I wrote. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh uh, no, uh, I was going to say, and I, I said this right before you jumped on, uh, that from different sources that I gathered, they said that 35 to 40 percent of relationships feel emotionally unavailable. Mm, that's a lot. That's Jesus. So, so, so nobody's talking. <laughs> Somebody not saying something. Are nobody? <laughs> present with themselves. So let me take it personally. I was during the time, like, you know, my sister committed suicide. My daddy died shortly after that. During that time, I still wanted male connection. The desire to be married and be or and, and to be in a connection, an intimate connection with the man ain't going nowhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just because you're mourning and grieving don't mean you don't want no, no, you don't want partnership. In fact, it emphasized my desire to want partnership because I didn't want to be, I, I would have been nice to have that burden shared with someone else. So imagine I'm date I'm dating. I, I went on a dating app, you know, from time to time because I don't really be outside. I have to use a date app. So I go on the dating app and um connected with people, but I made sure I put in my profile that I wasn't looking for, you know, long term and stuff because I don't like to mislead anybody. But um you know what I'm telling you is listen, y'all, I know I was not emotionally un uh, available to nobody. Met this guy. He said his intentions were the same. Just trying to meet friends. Just trying to connect and this, that, and the other. We went to happy hour. We talked. Got to know each other. Was just hanging out. He was like, would you want to hang out again? I was like, yeah. So it was just cool. Like, it was no date, no pressure. Where every once in a while, he would check on me, Sean. We would talk, you know, text and stuff. And and then these, and then we end up, like, maybe having, like, maybe one other phone conversation. So he said... Like he wanted to get together again. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, fast forward, somehow he sends me, not somehow, but he sent me this really cool questionnaire of like 50 questions to get to know the person. It was so cool. He was like, what's your email? He sent me that and he sent it to me and I'm already perking up because I'm not trying to connect, connect. So what I'm saying is this, I was aware because I am emotionally connected 
I could feel the difference where I wasn't emotionally connected. When I was emotionally unavailable, I could feel it. I knew the transition for me. So I ended up telling dude, I was like, you know, he sent me that. And I was like, this is so cool. Oh, I wish I was in a better space. Yeah. I wish I was in a better space. Like we would have probably developed something for real, you know? But we ended up getting on a phone call and I was like, I didn't, I don't know that I even did them questions. I don't think I did. But I, I thought it was real nice though. I took it, you know what I'm saying? I saved it and put it on, you know what I'm saying? But use it a future reference. Use a reference, you know what I mean? I might give it to somebody else. Not for me to date them or nothing, but I think couples can use it. I think it's real cool. So, <laughs> so needless to say, I um get on the phone with him and stuff, and he was like, Aquila, you know, I'd want to see you again, but I ain't gonna lie, you know, these last few, you know, couple weeks, few weeks or whatever it was, he was like, You seem like a really cool woman. He's like, I can see myself getting serious with you. And I was like, Whoop. I was like, Well, you saw my profile, right? I was like, I'm not in the best place. I was like, you don't want me right now. Mm. I was like, you, you don't want me. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm literally dealing with some stuff emotionally. I, I, I don't know. It might even be, I might even, it may seem like I'm using you because it's a nice moment of feeling, a, a nice moment of being fulfilled to, you know, talk to you and not be lonely and have these moments. But I'm going to be honest. I was like, I don't, I, I'm not in the best emotional space. And so he said, thank you for your honesty and we'll just discontinue here. Cause he was like, I'm starting to think you this great woman. I want to get to know you and all this stuff. And that's not, even though, and his profile and what he put, but I'm saying that to say that not everybody has the ability to be able to gauge that this is where they are. Everybody cannot self-diagnose that. So therefore the idea yet again, that somebody's trying to come in your life and just wreck your world up with intention is not a fact. That's a myth. Why you connect with me? Yeah, I can't say I ain't never felt like that. Why you even get involved with me if you knew you ain't had no emotions, you know? Well, they kind of didn't know. Sometimes that's a reality. Sometimes they may feel like it's doable. Yeah. Let me ask you this, though, because I love what you said as far as having the awareness to know, like, I'm not in a good spot right now. Because a lot of people, they like, you know, oh, he he's six foot two, he chocolate. Oh, he, I'm, I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my chance. I'm, I know I'm not in the greatest place but i can't miss this man oh, you know i've had, i've let some guys go not being in the, let me tell you and i let one go that was chocolate and six with something too you hear me <laughs> i can't let like to i let him go though i missed that i did and i'm being honest sometimes i was like dang i hate my honesty literally swear to you i swear reached out to me on the date nap i wasn't paying i wasn't on it intentionally reached out looked at that man i was like oh he fine and seemed like he was cool, da, 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 local, all the things. And I mean, checking in with myself, I still wasn't in a good place. This was a different season too. Different season. This is years later. Different season, but I had to let but, it go. But, so what's your question? But how do you know? Because there might be some people in the in the chat that's watching, like, where does that kick in? How do you know? Where does the confidence come from to say, I'll let this man pass like where does that because i look at it as confidence knowing amen. that you can amen. i wouldn't have thought of that yeah like think about it you can have something and yeah and still you say, say no it's like having the chocolate chip cookies right <laughs> you know a serving size but you like you know what i ain't gonna even eat the serving size. i'm gonna just eat half of the serving size you know what i'm saying so where did that confidence come from you know you always be bringing up good stuff brother from another mother listen so as you're saying this, I'm like, because I'm checking it. I'm like, dang, I didn't even think of it as confidence. Dang. But you know what comes to mind is love is not self-seeking. So when I think of these individuals, I think of what I do. I don't want to put them through. They don't deserve that. When I think about the love I want to have for my husband and the availability I want to have for him, the connection I want us to develop, I don't do toxic I'm being honest, majority of my relationships, I may have had some where we've had some quorums and stuff and uh, and a little bit too much of a back and forth with arguments, but majority of my relationships, we don't have, I don't have that. I'm serious. So you could check my references. Majority of anybody I've dated, they're going to say, me and Aquila had a good relationship for the most part, but here's our differences or whatever. But not this whole toxic, we got to be going at each other's neck. I don't ever desire to disrespect my man and I don't. I'm not trying to put you down. So why would I come talking about, you know, and I know people be talking about being your peace. 
there is enough reasons in the world in real life and relationships where each other ain't gonna be each other's peace because you're trying to grow understanding and language and how you all communicate and getting this merging and oneness together that I'm not gonna go and bring this additional. We're not talking baggage because baggage is something we all have, but I don't even got the right emotional stay, um, space for you. And I know about myself when I'm not in the best emotional space, depending on your emotional space too, because emotional unavailability is one thing. There may be some other emotions that are causing issue and could cause issue in your relationship that you may have to be aware of. But, but the reason that I would say no anyway is because I'm considering what I want in the future. I wouldn't want that person to hate me. And I would never, and I have literally found myself, unfortunately, in circumstances where I've had a couple of good, amazing men and they did not have the emotional tie to me. And that they both ended. However they got to the end, they both ended. Why would I want to sign up for that? And why would I want to sign someone else up for that? So the other thing is love is, is not self-seeking. But the other one is one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. So my ability to control myself from those sugar cookies, from the tall black men that had the dreads and all the things, because he had dreads too. But anyway, self-control. Like I have to control the reality that maybe I did miss the mark because so sometimes I ain't gonna lie. So I really think of stuff like this is why God, you know, I feel like God may give y'all signs to go talk to the therapist. This would be why the Lord give y'all the signs to go work on this and work on yourself and be more intentional so that when the person comes, you can be ready. I can't tell y'all I didn't just miss out on the best husband ever in my life. I can't tell you I didn't because I don't know and I won't know. But I'm telling you that this is why, you know, it is important for us to do the work. It's important for us to be intentional because I don't know, everybody's goals may not be the, si the same, but mine is tenure. I do want tenure. And I know tenure don't, is not a reflection of happiness, but I want tenured happiness. I know. That's right. That's tenured good. connection, tenured intimacy. I want that thing long term. That's good. Emotionally, emotional unavailability manifests through a lack of emotional expression or difficulty talking about feelings. Now, I know this is where I struggle big time because when it came to my feelings, and this is when I realized that, oh, I got mommy issues. There's things that I need to fix because I would, I would be, I would be out of my emotions, you know, and, yeah. and take it personal. And I'm like, oh, I haven't healed yet because now I'm taking this personal. Now I'm upset because you said something that could possibly help me. And yet, and still, I took it personal, and now I done flew off the handle thinking that you're coming for me when you just trying to help me course correct, you know. Exactly. So that was something that I had to uh, fix myself. So it's like when you talk about uh, feelings and when they've been locked up for so long, you really don't, don't know how to, to manage them. You know, because usually when you're younger, if you if you were in the space to where you were able to express yourself, I think that helps you when you uh, when you become an adult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do think so. I came in the same generation of being seen, not heard a lot of the times. But I must say that at some point that kind of took a turn and somewhere, you know, emotions were allowed and, you know, and, and, and the conversations around emotions were cultivated um as well and and i and sometimes you know i wonder because i'm not the expert on emotional availability but i do know that there's some information i can lend to the conversation but i wonder and i believe if i'm not mistaken that you know being emotionally unavailable can also be developed as you're older because if you're in a space where you've dwelled in a relationship for 10 years of your life and that became the new familiar the new normal where you are not allowed to feel you were, you know, why are you always this? Why are you always that belittled down? You know what I'm saying? And, and talk down and, and, and disrespected in a way that made you want to shut down having your feelings. You know what I'm saying? Then why would you then go and open yourself up again? And then guess what? You continue the behavior because you remember the last time. And that's what's so crazy is, you know, the Bible tells us to be like the little children. And I believe part of that is because they are forgiving and in some ways forgetful in a good way. Mm -hmm. They will mess around and, you know, my kids can get fussed at. And then by the end of the night, they're like, mama, can we go play this? this, this? I'm like, you didn't know. You just got a whole spanking. And you, and they like the day is new by, you know, an hour later. Yeah. <laughs>
Come and hug you after you done pop. Hug you. And, you know, and so with us adults, it, the forgetful part isn't so, um, you know, it, it doesn't come so smoothly and so effortlessly. So when, to me, a lot of the damage could be done as adults, not just when we were children. It's really like being in these relationships where a person doesn't validate your feelings. A person doesn't give you the space to talk about your feelings. I try to do my best to, to not make my, my, in my relationships, make my feelings be the only one that matter. And I find that in a lot of conversations I have to, sh you know, I must say, I even just with compassion, I'm just like, man, I do understand how men can feel the way they do because the women seem to take priority in feeling, you know, well, I feel like this, you know, and I feel like that. And I feel, 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 you know, that, you know, it never gives him an opportunity to have a feeling for his feeling to be the priority and things like that. So again, if a person is, it could go either way, man or woman, it, you know, but if a person is in a relationship and they're in a, as an adult where they don't have the space to feel and develop feelings, because now what do you say? If a man is out here doing mushy stuff, like are you a punk or da, 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 whatever, depending on where your background is, everybody's response is not as receptive to a person evolving emotionally. Mm -hmm. or or developing those emotional connections and ties and because there was no words around it no context given to it you know some people are like i don't know what's going on with me i literally have and i don't know if she'll beat me for this but one of my best friends actually you know i don't know where her start was around the emotions but sometimes like we still have conversation where i'm like baby girl it's okay now mind you we, we're both the same age but i'm like it's okay to feel and so when she has struggled with her emotions i tell her uh oh you're struggling with being human again you know <laughs> because because emotions are tied to humanness but not everybody is under not everybody is tied to emotions so that's a human aspect that's denied them you understand mm -hmm. so i just think i think that it can be some people being in relationships and then guess what now i'm safeguarding myself so when i go into the next relationship oh we ain't gonna have part two of what I just had. You ain't gonna be talking crazy about me because I'm trying to share my emotions with you yeah. and you talking about me or you, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Like even for me as a woman, if a man constantly, because I'm a bit of a mush ball. I watch, I'm a, I'm a crying, I'm watching movies. I saw a childhood friend today. I bawled and didn't know I was, I, I didn't know what I was gonna respond that way, but I bawled yeah. today. Seeing my childhood friend, her mom and everything. And if you're going to talk crazy to me, like, oh, my God, what you crying for? And all that other stuff, you ain't a safe space. That's good. So what I do Ooh. is I begin to protect my ability to stay vulnerable and have emotions by not constantly subjecting myself to people who don't welcome emotions. That's how I move. That's where I begin to recognize if this is an emotionally unavailable person, you're going to mess around and make me like you. I, gotta, I may have to chuck the deuces, you know what I mean? that is so good because i do believe and this is just my opinion i do believe that uh you can date down emotionally because we only talk about these you know i think we talked about directional dating i was talking about what uh pastor vernon in cleveland uh my old pastor he's talking about that the directional dating because you always talk about you know you're dating up financially but you could be dating down spiritually because the the, the guy or woman you with they don't know how to pray you know what I'm saying? So, so you can be dating down spiritually. You can be dating down emotionally because they're not validating your feelings. Right. You know. But I want to talk about that validation versus understanding. But be because a person who, in my experience, who's emotionally unavailable can validate by saying they agree, but they don't genuinely understand. They don't really have a tie to be able to understand the depth of why you feel the way you feel. So validation alone is not good enough when there's no understanding that provokes any change which one of the other differences that i wanted to share is compassion versus conviction a person can have compassion and say oh i'm so sorry but conviction means that they actually this is this is what makes me say i will i will say no to jacking up somebody else's um experience when i'm not in the right emotional place because i have a conviction to how that feels not just the compassion passion of oh that could be a bad experience for you that's okay he fine let me date him anyway <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. a person can validate by saying oh i do understand i agree you're right 
you're right. I did do it wrong. Blah, blah, blah. They validate, but they really don't understand, which is why they don't have a conviction. See, this is good. I, You know what? There's, there's two things I want to say Ooh. because you are killing it. And there's something I want to say since you brought that up. Uh, during this study time and on psychology today, one of the reasons they say that people struggle um, emotionally on availability is because they have difficulty forming or maintaining close relationships or may have a history of short term or superficial relationships. Superficial is probably the thing because people can keep up a long term relationship. Would you not agree and be an emotionally unavailable? Yeah. And, 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 the, and then, and then, uh, yeah. And, 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 and two, maybe because they both may be emotionally unavailable. They both. I say, it's agreed. That's why I said, see, being in a place, that's so wonderful. Because that's why I said what I said. Because of my own experience having emotions. I have, have emotions. I believe my, my emotional space is healthy. Where it's my, you know, sometimes, you know, think when we throw words around like clingy, people don't realize that a healthy emotion a emotion is an attachment like i can be attached and connected to you and not be clingy but clingy could be the definition of the person with no emotional availability because i'm not used to this person being connected i don't even know like ma the math ain't mathing for you because you don't have the emotional awareness and connection you don't realize that one plus one make two me being connected to you equals i want to spend time with you me being connected to you and now you're absent means I miss you. And they may translate that as, dang, I just gone for a day. Like, I'm just gone for two days. Like, I'm just, well, I have this emotion, right? This internal connection to you that wails, something that wails up about me. You know what I'm saying? Because why emotions are, you are filling my cup with something, mm. which is you. You are filling my cup up with you through conversation through interactions, through spending time. And then you confuse as to why I want to see you, why I want to spend time with you. So this is why I think it's important for us to have this awareness because when those things start to come into question for me, I'm going to be like, oh, something's wrong here because what I'm asking for is normal. Mm. <laughs> it's normal. You are supposed to have an emotional connection to me. Mm. You are supposed to be able to understand at least. You're not a woman. So maybe you don't understand because I saw, oh my gosh, I can't wait to post it when they talk about girl math, right? And they're like, hey, y'all, so I just want to let y'all know it's a man who did, did it, did it. And I was like, it's so funny, but it's so good. They, he was like, okay, y'all, so I learned that girl math is you can spend one day with her and that really don't equal a full day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's girl math, you know, because when we into you, you know, it ain't saying we ain't got no life, but I've seen posts about that too, like, Y'all, what happened to y'all jobs? Like when we when we talking, <laughs> we getting to know each other. You got to work, you got this to go on. But all of a sudden, when they start liking you, liking you, and you connected, you they like what happened? The men are like, what happened to your job? Because all you trying to do is is, is be in my world. Like what's that? And it's the joke, but at the same time, men who understand, we talking about understanding. They they might get it. They may not be able to accommodate it, but they get it. You understand what I'm saying? For sure. And that's what the beautiful thing about understanding is. Mm -hmm. That's why the emotional, the connection to emotions are important because it's imperative that you as a man understand where your wife is and understand what she needs and understand um, the space that, that ain't necessarily yours. Like you may not have the same emotional needs that she has, but your conviction for the way that, you know, when conviction is important also because if she doesn't get the things that she needs emotionally and you're impacting her in this very negative way for whatever, let's say you frustrate her and she feels unheard, then you have a connection to her means that you're, it, that there's a conviction to say, let me go figure this out. Mm -hmm. Versus sometimes it, it will land in the heart and in the ears of someone who don't know what to do with it. And that's why they can't come up with resolution. That's why they said, I, I, we already talked about this, but I'm talking to you about it again because I didn't get any resolve. And you didn't help me come up with a plan so that, or the reassurance to know that this isn't gonna be a constant or whatever, but there's no connection for that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because as I've gotten older, um, I like I love touch. 
I, you know, I, I realize I have fewer years ahead of me, you know, now that I'm older, I'm like, everything is important to me now, you know? So uh, give me the hugs, give me the kisses, give me, you know, talk to me, you know, because yes. I, and I'm yes. stimulated mentally and emotionally, right? So that's my whole thing, because when we can connect on that level, because if somebody really like you, like you said, they're not going to use the she's too clingy or all that other stuff. It's like, nah, we we hitting on all cylinders. Nah, nah yeah. I'm going to be clingy right here with you. Do you hear me? <laughs> Dear God, send me my clingy man. Amen. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Send me the one that's out here like, babe, what you doing? And I kid you not, I literally told that. I'm like, I don't want you. Like, And I literally, one time I was dating a guy and I said more recently, I was like, hey, do you care to know like where I'm at and where I'm going and stuff like that? He's like, yeah, I want to know. He was like, why does it bother me? I said, no, I was just trying to make sure because that's a requirement. Like, you got to check on me. You got to know where I'm at. You got to be in my business. Baby, where you at? FaceTime me. I want to see you. You know, I'm okay with it. You know, because like you said, as we get older, like it's spending the time. Those things are become, they become higher values. You know what I'm saying? Higher in your value. But, um, and I don't think it's just being older, to be honest. I'm probably always been this way. I just really appreciate, you know, um, intimacy. I really do. But I mean, I, you know, when I saw my childhood friend today, I was hugging on her, telling her I love her. And I've talked to her. I just haven't seen her. But I hugged her mom. I'm hugging her. I'm hugging everybody. Okay. So it is what it is. When I see my friends, I'm hugging on them. I kiss them on the face and they just be like, oh my God. But so the reality is, is I I do appreciate intimacy, but what I do know is I don't want nobody to question how I feel about them. Mm, that's good. I don't want nobody to question. And emotionally unavailable, unavailable, unavailable people don't even have a real healthy sense of that. Mm -hmm. Because within yourself, would you be able to say that during the course of you being in that space where you started to identify where you were in your previous marriage, did it matter how you how she felt like or how she felt about you like she said you're not present anymore you're not paying attention did it matter it's, you were like at one time it didn't that's what i'm saying yeah. you're like mm -hmm. okay I, mm -hmm. I mean i hear you and it's like trying to feel well i can't but i'm trying mm -hmm. yeah i'm trying yeah. to care but i don't mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, there was a, a friend of mine, she told me, she said, uh, heal people here differently. We do. But I'm telling you the truth about what I just said. But when I'm trying to care, when I was in a place where I was not emotionally present for nobody else, I can't care about you. So I'm not passing judgment on nobody. I'm saying, hey, listen, I, I don't I don't want that space for nobody. Like, I really don't. Anybody on this live that's struggling with being emotionally unavailable, like, check in sandra sandra susan she says i'm at i'm at that point i really felt that yes what point are you at though tell me Sandra. i don't know which part because it could be a bit of a delay but i didn't see i don't know what part you were responding that to but i just think it's important for you know literally like to understand that being emotionally unavailable is a selfish place it's just really not a place that's for uh for the community if you will you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you ain't, you don't, you can't be in the best interest of everybody else. Sometimes when you're in emotional unavailability, and like I said, it does. And what's thank you, Holy Spirit? I was like, what else did I want to say? It doesn't mean that emotionally unavailable people don't want the version of connection you give. They just mm. may not be able to reciprocate it. Mm. Yeah, she that said. Mean that you can't get, they don't want good stuff. They don't mean they don't want a good experience. That don't mean that they don't want a person touching them. That don't mean they don't want a person, you know, to call and talk to. It doesn't mean that they don't want those things. She, she said, girl, I feel you. <laughs> it's why I'm divorcing and moving to New York to get my own place um, and my own name and leaving. Uh, I tried for almost seven years. Yes, yes. Yes, that's a... Uh, Time because you have to be intentional. You every morning, like people be like, you know, what what's marriage like? Marriage is every morning saying that I choose you. It is every morning, <laughs> afternoon, and night. I choose you regardless. You know what I'm saying? And that because sometimes 
and 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 people come come at me for this sometimes but sometimes you have to be the sacrificial lamb in your marriage when it comes to setting the example some people don't know what healthy relationships look like some people don't know what being fully aware looks like and, it, and everybody don't have self-awareness and there are levels to self-awareness yep yep he said uh he cheated as much as I tried to forgive, but there's no communication, nothing being like he went on for three years. Now, see stuff like that. I get it. You know, I, I, I can't make that call for you, but I understand. If, you know, you stepping out on your marriage and stuff like that. Uh, um, so I see somebody that said that it's hard to tell the difference. No, it's I'm gonna tell you, this is why we're having the conversation. It's not hard to tell the addition, the difference between to me. Let me say why I say, I'm gonna say to me, because an emotionally unavailable person who's trying to develop in their emotions, it it, it actually does have a different look. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? What's up, Georgia? I love you too. Uh, yeah, follow her, y'all. She's a comedian. She's crazy, but anyway. <clears throat> but um, I'm not kidding. Like it's the reason I say that I feel like there is a difference because when a person for one, there is a, let, let me say this, got a question for you real quick. Would, would in fact, if your ex-wife would have left you, would you have cared? Oh, you're talking to me now? Yeah. Oh, I was looking at the question, yeah. Repeat would, that, I'm sorry. If, you, if your ex-wife would have left you during being, that, during being emotionally unavailable, would you have cared? Oh, no, because I, I was. I that's was. the difference. <laughs> a person who's emotionally unavailable are not trying to just let you walk away. They are literally trying to make the investment that's necessary to keep that relationship going. There is a, and, and you have to understand emotionally unavailability is, is like I said, they don't, they want good stuff. So some people can be like, oh, don't leave. But you have to understand, they may say, no, let's just stay connected. Let's keep each other's phone number. That doesn't mean that they want to have connection and relationship though. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I had a guy that was like, I don't want to, I'm not even kidding. Um, when I lived in Dallas, it was a guy that I dated in Dallas and he was like, I'm just saying, why can't we just be friends? You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't we just keep talking? And I was like, absolutely not. But we carried on in a relationship where consistency existed. He had great habits. We dated well. We went to nice places. We talked. But you have to understand the difference between a person talking regular. Do See, talking business, keeping the keeping the life together is not necessarily the stuff where you're, you know, that's why these, some of these posts that people think are far-fetched is because they probably don't know it by experience. But if a person knows what it's like to really talk to somebody to two or three o'clock in the morning about nothing, that's connection. Yeah. That's yeah. connection. We're not, what, but, but my due diligence says, let me just talk to you because I know I have to talk to you. I know I have to connect with you. I need to make sure you're alive. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm being so serious. Like, but when a person has a connection with you, like, baby, that's why I said there's certain things that people are not used to when they deal with me. And I'm not talking about just men. I'm talking about females, some women friends. I said, you got to understand in this relationship, if we in it, we're going to have conversations, hard conversations about the things. If I did something to offend you, I need to know. See, emotionally unavailable, they really don't have the ability to take that feedback and create any type of change. So telling them if you find yourself telling somebody something 30 million times, and I mean that you let 30 million mean what it means to you. But to me, like if I got to keep telling you the same thing, probably around, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to throw out a rule, a, a number. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm even want you to lean in this number, but I'm saying if I got to say basic things like 10 times mm -hmm. and there's no even gradual adjustment, sometimes a person is not present. I think a lot of unemotional, emotionally unavailable people are not present. Present means, oh, shoot, I just burned myself. Think about it like this. Thank you, Lord. A person can have skin, have muscles, and have bones and have no feeling in it. <laughs> right? What do they call that? Paralyzed. Mm. They got all the same parts. Mm. They can have all the current, the same makeup, but there's nothing in their nervous system. There's nothing that's communicating to their nervous system that there should be feeling there. Mm. Emotion. Emotionally, unavailability is like a paralyzed heart. Mm, that's good. That's good. And and I like that because uh, and my wife and I we just did a video the other day talking about being present. Um, 
I don't even sleep with my phone in the room anymore. I got an old school clock. I do too. Um, I can't lie. <laughs> yeah, to, to those who you know, uh, thirty five and over, maybe forty and over, uh, it's it's called a clock. It's it's a, it has little digital numbers on. It. I know a lot of people are like, what is a digital clock? But when I go in the bedroom and it's just my wife and I, my phone is away. You know, what I'm saying this this time is just for us. Yes, that's good. And, and I realized too, even when my wife and I talk, and I, cause I had to catch myself sometimes when we're talking and say, you know, we busy, we're on our phones and we doing all this stuff or whatever, and we talking, it's like, stop. Yep. Stop, you know what I'm saying? Or if she's texting somebody or something and I'm talking to her, I'll stop. That's, that's again, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a thing. Like being present, I believe, is definitely, I feel a reflection of it being emotionally available i think it's being able to be present because you care about the impact you're having on that person you care about the space that you really share with somebody you really care about that you know she said i do most of the providing and leading basically was forced to be the masculine one in the marriage and it pushed you too far i do understand and my prayer for you as you're transitioning is that your heart heals that it does not become a heart of stone that you don't lose faith and trust in your ability to love and that when you are in a place where you feel that you are um you know in, in a more stronger place in a good healthy space that if you decide to pursue love again that you find you know that you find good love you know what i'm saying so be patient with yourself and believe them when they say they don't have the emotional or mental capacity agree georgia believe the people we cannot force them to be outside out of that situation because we want them to and that's why i said love is not self-seeking you have to not take a selfish stance and say because i want you that i need you to get ready for me this is a personal journey they have to be the ones to go and initiate and process that thing so yeah so i know we've right we've, we've met our time yeah yeah for sure we yeah we don't yeah oh it's nine o'clock oh my god this is good but I do want to say also that there's a lot of people uh, who might be struggling with um, paying attention, right? You know, there's a lot of people that that's struggle. True. Absolutely, that's true too. Not having good habits with that is good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's some people who, who might have, you know, ADHD, they might have, you know what I'm that, saying? So that too. you have to know. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some people out there, I'm just like, you know what? that's what i get it you know what i'm saying so there, there might be some people who struggle with that or whatever so hear that y'all that that's that also she said and i do have adhd exactly so that's my thing like so that's why it's imperative to kind of take all the things and not just isolate and say oh just one thing he must be emotionally unavailable or she must be emotionally unavailable. it's yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's a collective of behaviors it's not just you know one mm -hmm. thing Yes, for sure. Uh, Q, this has been a phenomenal episode. I can't wait to uh, put a replay up here and post this stuff on Instagram. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Listen, uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. And I'm going to be coming on YouTube soon. I'm going to get my, my act together and get over on YouTube. Hmm? Get back over on YouTube, please. I will. <laughs> I will. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, and um, and I'll be on YouTube. So yes, for sure. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, thank you so much, Sean. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this was good. I have yes, I'm agree with you. What's she what, saying? What is that? I can't even. Don't judge me. I can't see the how to pronounce your name, but she said emotionally unavailable people need to get out the dating pool. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. They can go in the in the P in the P pool where the where the P is. You want the healthy people to That's be with, in the chlorine. She said, she said, go heal. Just go heal. I'm with it. I'm <laughs> yeah, with it. Go heal. Get out of here. <laughs> but anyway, it's been amazing. Thank you guys for staying on and for being a part of the conversation. As always, it's a pleasure to talk to you, bro. Like every single time. And we we got to do something again, of course. So yeah. um, in the meantime, in between time, y'all go follow him as well. Um, and go connect with him on YouTube. He's got a really great Brave Heart community over there. So look, I'm, I'm going to get back together and I'll be on YouTube soon. But until then, y'all, y'all have a good night. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you.
<laughs> Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Go connect with uh, Quilla. She's just a phenomenal woman. She's always been supportive throughout the year. So go and connect with her. The woman is lovely with wisdom. Uh, I don't know how many times we've done collaborations. I got some stuff on my YouTube channel. Uh, go check out the website, scarytoremarry.com. Um, we just started the Love Fearlessly set where uh, we have the Love Fearlessly shirts. We have uh, the Love Fearlessly intimacy card deck. So we talked about um, being available emotionally. The card deck is going to help you ask so many questions and get to know someone more in detail to really help them to stay focused on each other. Some great questions. 30 uh, card set. Uh, make sure you go check that out at scary2mary.com. You will appreciate that so much. Thank you once again, everyone. Um, make sure we all follow each other. I'm going to connect with you as well. If there's any topics that you want me to address, if you want Q to come back, uh, let me know. Send me an inbox. We'd we'll love to hear your feedback. So thank you all once again. Share this with someone you never know because some folks are struggling uh, with their emotions and this uh, live can have, could have helped them. Who knows? So thanks again, people. This is Sean Heineman. I'm out. Take care.